Welcome back. It's time to continue trying to solve our turntable troubles. Uh, just as a recap, uh, the last time we were here we found out that we're not getting any uh, voltage output from the transistor that's supposed to be right here in the Q201 spot, which is the regulator, which uh, is controlled by the AN6680 IC that's supposed to go right there. And according to the schematic, both uh, pin 10 and 9 both go to the transistor, which was originally a 2SC 1846. That was a Panasonic part number that's uh, apparently no longer being made, and I couldn't find any available anywhere. So I ended up resorting to this uh, BD135-6, which is actually made by Fairchild. Uh, according to the specs, it looks pretty similar. Um, like it's not exactly identical or anything, but I think it's only being used as like a pass transistor. So the AN6680 controls the gate of the transistor and you know, kind of like a, uses it as a feed or that uses the voltage output kind of like as a feedback. I couldn't find a data sheet on the 6680 right off the bat or anything, but I did find a picture that just kind of showed a little block diagram of the inside. Both the uh, nine pin nine and 10 we're showing to go to like a little power, uh, it just said like a little power block. But, I mean, it wasn't very detailed or anything. So, but what I think it's doing is that it's basically, it's just controlling the gate of the transistor. So it, you know, keeps the voltage output right here stable. So we're going to take the BD-135 and we're going to place it in this spot here. For the 6680, I don't want to solder it directly back onto the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a socket in there. So that way I can just pop it in and if it turns out that it is bad, then I can order a new one and easily just pop it back out and replace it. I didn't have any, uh, this is like a 28 pin or 24 pin socket. I didn't have any 24 pin sockets, but I had some 40s. So I just uh, snipped off the part that I didn't need. And luckily there was this kind of like support right here, right in the middle. So it actually works out perfect. So that's going to go here. And then the power or the motor controller I was thinking to just uh, solder back onto the board, although if there ends up being something wrong with this one too, I don't want to make I don't want it to be a hassle to have to remove it again. So what I think I'm going to do is because these sockets aren't wide enough and this chip is pretty wide as you can see, because I can't use a socket, I'd have to use some machine pins. So I'm probably just going to break some of these off, stick them on there and then that way I can remove this easily and also you can't really use this. I don't think you'd be able to use a socket with this because of the fact that it's got the screws on the bottom. Even if there was a socket wide enough, it would kind of interfere with that, as you can see right there. So that would be no good. So we're going to put some some of these in here, and that way we can pop the uh, motor controller in and out as needed. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'll put the socket in, I'll put the transistor on, and we'll stick the control chip back on, and then we'll see uh, if we get any sort of uh, voltage output how we're supposed to. We're expecting, according to the schematic, 9.4 volts at the emitter of this uh, transistor. All right, so now that's done. Got the chip in the socket here, got the transistor in place, and I've marked pins uh, nine and 10 here on the board just so I can, you know, better just uh, keep track of them just so I can see it. Okay, here we go. So I'm switching it on. This uh, pin right here, pin eight, is a ground. So let's see what we're getting at pin nine. 2.344, four, that's not looking good. And on pin 10, we're getting 1.73. So I have a feeling this chip is bad. So unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to replace it. This uh, transistor is out. It's getting really hot. <laughs> so it's probably something shorted inside the IC. So yeah, I'm going to replace it. There should be no reason why that's getting as hot as it is because it doesn't really go to anything else after that other than this uh, the pitch control I see up here. But... I don't think that would be an issue. I mean, unless I remove it and see if it's... Well, actually, no, that should be easy to test. We, we can just check and see if there's a short at the input of that to ground. So ground to this one is pin five, and the voltage input that comes straight off of that transistor is uh, pin nine. So let's see what kind of resistance we're getting between pin nine and pin five, which would be one, two, three, four, five. 31 ohms, well 31.7. Maybe we should remove the 
control I see and see what kind of resistance we get without that in place. I could have sworn I checked the resistance on this one to ground before, although I'm going to do it again because maybe I, I didn't, but yeah, I don't remember. So I'll check that one too, but let's check this again and let's see what we get. So pin 9 was ground and pin 5 should be here. Oops. Yeah, so now it's definitely higher. So it's, uh, yeah, I really doubt that it's, um, or actually pin 5 is ground and pin 9 is uh, VCC. So, yeah, it appears that this one's the one that's shorted. Let's uh, let's check the resistance on this again. So pin 8 was ground, and pin 9 and 10 are for power. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's pin 8 and pin 9. That's reading kind of high. What about pin 10? Oh, there it is. 31.57 ohms. So, yeah got an issue with this one and like I said I could have sworn that I checked the resistance on it before and I don't remember finding anything significant but that 31 ohms does yeah that does not look right at all I really don't think it should be that low so I'm gonna have to order a new one of these and uh, we'll give it a shot once again It's been about two and a half weeks and I finally received the replacement AN6680. And from uh, first glance, it looks pretty legit. It comes in this uh, two-sided uh, plastic case with these uh, little plastic snaps. I haven't taken it out yet, so I don't know what it looks like. But, I mean, everything looks, uh, it's not like I would expect it. It's really not what I would expect it to see if it was a, like, say, like a counterfeit or, you know, like a previously used uh a device or whatever so let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got inside and there it is it looks very identical to the original one here so I think that we're pretty safe that this is a legit chip I bought this from an eBay seller that goes by the name of uh, DJ spare parts and uh, it looks good so we're just gonna pop this in and see what we get well first let's uh Let's uh, compare the resistance that we were getting between the ground and pin number 10 on here and see what we get on the other one. So this one here was about 30, 31, almost 31 and a half ohms. Now let's see what we get on this one. We got pin 8 and 10 right here. There we go. That sounds a lot better. Almost 3 and a half K ohms. So, yeah. Defin definitely, definitely bad. So looks like we're going to be good here. All right, so let's go ahead and turn power on. It's on. We'll check and see if this is getting warm at all. Mm, not really, which is a good sign because this was getting pretty warm, like almost instantly as soon as you turned it on. So pin 8 was ground, which is this one here. And I don't remember, let's see, pin 10 is the one where we should be getting about 10 volts. So this is pin 10 right here. Oops. Pin 10. Ha! There it is. 9.465, close enough. Let's check pin number 9. 10 volts. Do I have that right? Okay, no, no, no. Pin number ten, 9 was 10 volts. Pin number 10 was supposed to be 9.4. So, looks really good so far. Okay, so the board's back in. I've got the uh, little sockets there. So this can just fit into those. And it fits pretty snug, so I don't think that's going anywhere. So it's like that. Um, one little minor setback is I cannot for the life of me find what I did for with all the, the screws for this thing. I had them in a little baggie like this, and I seem to have misplaced it. So before I can put it all back together, I gotta figure out what I did with it. Luckily, I still had the screws that went here that hold down the like that um, sleeve bearing and this whole assembly. So we can at least test it. So we're good on that part. I gotta rewind the uh, or like re-wrap the wires around here, and I don't have a tool to do that. But I remember a long time ago in a Radio Shack uh, before they went out of business, <laughs> obviously, or not they're closing down. It was like years ago. They used to have a tool that looked like a, a screwdriver like this. But instead, it had a hollow tube, like that, on the end, with a hole in it. And I remember it distinctly saying that it was a wire wrapping tool. So here what I tried to do is I took this copper tubing, 
drill the hole in it, kind of at an angle. You can't really tell, but I kind of try to drill it at an angle in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can wrap these around by sticking this in here. It's a little stiff because I, I had to straighten these out and recoat them with solder because it was they were just like super brittle. Fortunately, this one here, some of the wires started kind of breaking, so it's a little bit more rough than this one is. This one's actually sort of smooth. So let's see if we can get it through there. And there it goes. And like that. And now let's see if we can wrap this around. So the way I imagine this working is, you know, it just kind of goes in there. And then you would twist the tool. Like, okay, that's not working. Okay, new idea. Let's pull this back out. Let's see. I don't know, let's just put the end through here. Oh, no, that's not going to work how I wanted it to. Yeah, so, I don't know, maybe this just isn't going to be good enough for this, so I might just end up having to do it by, by hand. Unfortunately, this wire doesn't bend very really easily now that I've coated it with solder. So, let's see, maybe... Eh, it's sort of working. Oh, there it goes, kind of. It's really hard, though. But it's going, ah, and it broke. Well, crap. All right, so that didn't work out too well. I got it somewhat wrapped on there. I'm just gonna leave that on there. At least we can test it out. This one here, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, try to wrap it by hand. It's gonna look kinda ugly because obviously I'm not using any sort of tool to do this. I'm trying to keep it as tight as possible so that it it doesn't slide off very easily and that part there really sucks because it's got a big bulk of solder on it and uh, and it broke as well oh well let's go ahead and put this on and there it goes so as you can see it still rotates freely let's plug it in and oh I had it already on well that's working now that wasn't working before Obviously the other chip was bad, so let's see, start, sweet, it looks like it's working pretty well, unfortunately it doesn't look like the LEDs over here on, for some reason these aren't working, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on with those LEDs there yet, um, they all go to this bundle of the cables and obviously that's plugged in, so I don't know, I might need to check on this uh, transistor here, so I'll check and see if we're getting a, a signal here on this transistor, because this one should be like turning on and off really fast. To drive the LEDs that are in here. There's like a total of four LEDs and a little cluster in here. The transistor, the base, actually goes directly to one of the pins on the AN6680 here. It's a uh, pin 11. The other side goes to, or I mean the, the base also goes to a small capacitor here. It's a 0.1 microfarad and then that goes to ground. The emitter goes directly to ground and then the collector is the one that drives the negative side of this whole chain of LEDs here. Uh, the other side goes to positive, the 21 volts, by way of a resistor here, which on the schematic is labeled uh, R212, and it says it's 150 ohm. So I thought we should check these first and make sure that there's nothing wrong with these, like this one's not shorted to ground or whatever, and that this one here isn't open or anything. 219 is right here. It's right next to the that transistor so let's make sure that that's not shorted and it's not it's reading about 8.6 mega ohm here and then R212 up here 212 it's uh, right next to this connector that goes to the lamp so let's see what that one's reading 202 K ohms that's definitely open so let me see if I have a 120 laying around, so, or what is it, one, was it 150 or 120? Well, 150, 150 ohms. All right, turns out I did have some in my stuff, and as you can see, sure enough, 150 ohms, and it's also an eighth watt, just like the one that's in there, so this will be a direct replacement. Now there it is, 150 ohms at that point, and here's the old resistor, and yeah, it's, it's reading almost 5k but it's got the exact same markings as this one it's brown green brown so I'm guessing this probably took a hit when this whole thing got shorted out 
the platter back on. Okay, let's uh, plug this back in. Turn it on. And now they're lit. But it yeah, it's not lit very bright. Yeah, as you can see, it's uh, got kind of a faint red glow right there. Uh, it looks like only one of the LEDs is lit. So I think maybe these LEDs also took a hit. So we're gonna we're gonna have to replace those as well. Cause yeah, it's definitely not working. All right, so there's the bottom of the unit. The strobe LEDs are underneath this piece here. We've got to remove like uh, four screws off of this here, and then this kind of just uh, you know you can like lift it up and tilt it out. We've got to remove this like the the on off switch here, and there's a little E clip right here. You got to be careful with that though because there is a little uh, steel ball in there that is the one that kind of helps this uh, click in place on and off. So there's the clip, keep that in place. We're gonna lift this out. Actually, we're just gonna let it drop out because I believe it's inside of this. Yeah, so right there. Just gotta make sure not to lose that. That will allow this to pop up like that. And, uh, whoops, sorry. And there's our LEDs right there. All right, it took a bit of prying and there's actually some little clips in there that, that hold um, this front part in place, the one that's got this uh, kind of translucent plastic. But it's finally coming up and it's uh, also that glue on the side there that went to these or that was on the side here also didn't help and that was kind of keeping it down but yeah after some prying it finally came up unfortunately this one the one little clip right there kind of snapped even though I was trying to like move them off to the side uh, sometimes it's kind of inevitable things happen but I mean it's it's not the end of the world it'll still go back on and it should come out the front there we go so there's one, there's one of the LEDs. All right, I just got my meter here on a diode check. So we're gonna touch uh, the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and see if anything happens and nope, it's uh, shorted. All right, unfortunately I didn't have a, uh, four red LEDs, like little bright ones that I could use there. And I had a bunch of these uh, three millimeter wide LEDs that are pretty bright. So for testing purposes right now, I just installed uh, four of those here which should be okay. Uh, I believe eventually a friend wants me to install some blue ones in here anyways. So for now, just to make sure everything's working fine, I'm just gonna leave those in there. I'll go put this back together and we'll give it another shot. Okay, here we go again. I've got them all replaced, got it back together. Turn it on. There we go. Now we can see it's strobing, so let's... Ha! There we go. It's on now, so... I've got the pitch control there right, pretty much centered. Obviously, if we speed it up or slow it down, it responds accordingly. Yep, it's working. So, I guess uh, we're pretty much good now. I just gotta uh, find the rest of those screws, like I said. I can't, can't believe I misplaced those things. I could have sworn that I left them inside of the the, the rest of the assembly here, but I they weren't in there, so... They gotta be around here somewhere. Somewhere on my bench, it gets messy, cluttered, but they're in a little baggie, so once I find them, I'll put everything back together and uh, I think I'll call it pretty much done. So, again, thanks guys for watching. Remember to thumbs up if you like this stuff and I'll catch you guys next time.